Hi, everyone. Welcome to another chilling episode where we travel together to explore the unknown, the unexplained, and the terrifying. Every story you hear is based on encounters with creatures that defy logic and leave us questioning what's really out there. So sit back, turn down the lights, and prepare yourself for something that might just keep you awake tonight. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, these stories will make you think twice about what's lurking in the shadows. Our adventure begins now. It was a little after 9 p.m. on a Tuesday when it all went down. The sky was already dark, though you could still see a faint orange glow on the horizon. I had just finished up at this small, kind of run-down strip mall. You know the type. Half the stores were empty, and the ones still running weren't exactly booming with business. The only places open were a 24-hour gym, a laundromat, and this discount grocery store. I had grabbed a few snacks and was walking toward my car, parked in the far corner of the lot. Honestly, I don't know why I parked so far away. The place wasn't crowded at all, but I guess I just wanted some space. Work had been rough that day, and my head was full of all sorts of stuff I didn't want to deal with. The air was cool and a light mist hung around, making everything look slick under the streetlights. The pavement had this faint shimmer to it, which added to the odd feeling of the place. It wasn't a scary kind of quiet, more like a stillness that felt out of place for that time of night. Even the gym, which usually had people coming and going at all hours, looked deserted. My car was the only one parked in the back part of the lot, and the sound of my footsteps echoed in the emptiness. I wasn't in any hurry. I stopped for a second to dig through my grocery bag, trying to open a candy bar I'd just bought. That's when I first noticed something off. I heard this rustling noise coming from behind one of those big dumpsters near the back of the lot. At first I thought it was just a stray animal, maybe a raccoon or a cat. But when I looked over, I saw something move, and it wasn't a cat. Whatever it was, it was low to the ground and moving in this odd, jerky way. At first, I couldn't tell if it was crawling or walking on all fours, but it wasn't right. It was shuffling, almost dragging itself from side to side. There was this weird scraping sound, like something hard brushing against the concrete. I stood there, trying to make sense of what I was looking at, but it was hard to see in the dim light. I figured maybe it was a sick animal, so I started walking again, a little quicker this time. My car wasn't far, and I wasn't about to get involved with whatever that thing was. As I got closer to my car, I heard that scraping again, louder this time, like it was following me. I glanced back, trying not to make it obvious, and that's when I saw it. It had moved out from behind the dumpster and was standing under a streetlight. It wasn't an animal. It was upright now, hunched over, but definitely on two legs. The thing was bigger than I'd thought, tall but bent at this unnatural angle. Its skin looked rough and patchy, like parts of it were missing or burned. The limbs were way too long for its body, and the way they dangled down made it look even more out of place. What really got to me, though, was the face. It was flat, like a person's face, but wrong, too big, and stretched out in a way that made my stomach turn. The eyes were dark, but for a second, they caught the light, reflecting it back in a strange, almost metallic way. I didn't know what to do. My first instinct was to run, but something told me that would make things worse. So I stood there for a few seconds, gripping my car keys so hard that my hand hurt. The creature didn't make any noise, just shifted its weight, moving its arms slightly and scraping its feet along the ground as it watched me. After what felt like forever, it turned around. Just like that, it moved away, back into the shadows behind the dumpster. It didn't rush off or try to scare me, just slowly shuffled away. That's when I snapped out of it. I dashed to my car, hands trembling as I fumbled with the keys. I managed to unlock the door and jump inside, slamming it shut behind me. I don't think I've ever driven out of a parking lot so fast in my life. My heart was pounding, and I didn't stop until I was at least a mile away. Even then, 
I kept glancing in the rearview mirror, half expecting to see that thing trailing behind me. Of course, there was nothing, but I still couldn't shake the feeling that something was wrong. For the longest time, I didn't mention it to anyone. I thought it was one of those things where, if I talked about it, it would sound ridiculous. Besides, what was I going to say? That I saw something strange behind a dumpster in a strip mall parking lot? It wasn't like I could find an explanation online either. I looked, believe me. I searched for any mention of a creature like that, but I came up with nothing. No sightings, no folklore, nothing that fit what I saw. The oddest part is that I've been back to that strip mall a couple of times since then. It's not like I want to, but it's the closest place to grab groceries. Every time I go, I park as close to the entrance as possible, and I don't hang around. The place is always busy now. There are more people, more cars. But every time I walk through that lot, I get this strange feeling in the back of my mind. Like maybe, if I'm not paying attention, I'll catch a glimpse of that thing again. I haven't yet, but I can't say it's not out there, lurking around in the darker corners where no one looks. Whatever it was, it wasn't something I've ever heard of or read about. Maybe it was a sick animal, but it didn't seem like it. The way it moved, the way it looked at me, it felt intentional, almost like it was aware of me and choosing to leave me alone. I don't know. All I do know is that I'll never forget what I saw that night. It wasn't something from a story. It was real. And it left me with this nagging feeling, and I'm constantly on edge. Can anyone offer me any insight? It happened on a Wednesday evening, one of those regular, uneventful days where everything is routine. I had left work around 5, swung by the grocery store, and made it back home by 6. I live in a typical suburban neighborhood near Cleveland, Ohio, the kind where everything looks the same, house after house, lawn after lawn. It was late September, so the evenings were starting to cool off, but nothing too dramatic. I just grabbed the mail and was walking back to the house when something caught my attention. My neighbor across the street had one of those motion sensor lights that flicked on suddenly. I looked over, expecting to see a raccoon, but there was nothing there. The light stayed on for a bit, then clicked off. I shrugged it off and went inside. After putting the groceries away, I started making dinner. I was cooking spaghetti, nothing complicated. But while I was stirring the sauce, I heard a noise outside the window, which was open a bit. At first it was faint, almost like something walking across the grass. I glanced out the kitchen window, expecting to see something ordinary. Instead, standing near the back fence, there was something, someone, maybe. Its frame was tall and its limbs seemed longer than they should be. The light from the house barely touched it but I could see enough to know it wasn't a person standing by the fence. I stood there, staring out the window. My mind kept flipping through possibilities. Maybe a neighbor messing around, or some weird shadow cast by a tree. But the figure shifted, just slightly, enough that I knew it was something real. The way it moved, it wasn't hurried. It took its time, almost like it knew there was no reason to rush. As it came closer, I could make out more details. Its skin had a strange, pale tone, almost like it blended with the fading light. Its arms hung low, too low for a regular person, and its head was small in proportion to its body. I couldn't see its eyes clearly, but I could tell they were bigger than normal, dark and reflective. I felt my pulse quicken, but I didn't panic. I stood there watching it get closer, I stepped back slowly and moved to the back door where I could get a better view through the glass. The figure didn't change its pace, it kept moving toward the house step by deliberate step. It stopped about ten feet from the door. I could see it more clearly now. Its face, or what I thought was its face, was smooth, with no real features except for those oversized eyes and a thin, barely there mouth. It wasn't looking around, just standing there facing me. I don't know why I didn't freak out. 
Maybe it was the way it was just standing there, not trying to get closer, not trying to break in. It didn't seem hostile, just curious. There was no noise, no sound at all, just this silence between us. My hand was gripping my phone, but I didn't call anyone. I couldn't imagine how to explain this. What would I even say? We stood like that for what felt like forever, but in reality, it was probably just a few minutes. It didn't do anything, just kept its distance. Then, just as slowly as it had approached, it turned around and started walking back toward the fence. It moved with the same unhurried pace, fading into the shadows near the tree line at the edge of the yard. And then, it was gone. I didn't sleep that night. I kept replaying what had happened, trying to make sense of it. The next morning, I went out to the yard to see if there were any tracks or some sign that it had been there. But everything looked undisturbed. The grass wasn't flattened, the fence was fine, and there was nothing unusual. I thought about mentioning it to someone, but I didn't want to sound ridiculous. Who would take me seriously? A few days later, I was at the local diner, and I overheard a conversation between two older men sitting at the counter. One of them was saying something about seeing a figure in his backyard around the same time. His description was almost identical. Tall, pale, long arms, moving slowly, but with purpose. I didn't speak up. I didn't want to be part of whatever local rumors might start floating around after that but it made me think maybe I wasn't the only one who had seen it. Maybe this thing had been moving through the neighborhood, and others had caught a glimpse of it, too. Since that night, nothing else has happened. I haven't seen it again, and life in the neighborhood has gone on like normal. But every now and then, when I'm outside in the evening and it's especially quiet, I get this uneasy feeling, like something might be out there, just beyond where I can see, I don't know what it was, and maybe I never will, but I can't shake the feeling that it's not far off. It was a slow summer afternoon, the kind that made everything feel heavy. I had gone to the library hoping to kill some time, I don't know if you've ever spent much time in a small town library, but they're usually pretty dull. You get the occasional elderly folks or a kid flipping through picture books, but mostly it's quiet, almost too quiet. It's the kind of place where you go when you need to escape the world for a bit, but don't want to go too far. This was a Thursday afternoon about 3 p.m., and the weather outside was gloomy, overcast, with thick clouds hanging low. The air was heavy and humid, like a storm might roll in, but never quite did. Inside the library, the lights were dim, and the air conditioner hummed quietly, trying to fight off the sticky warmth. I was sitting near the back of the room at one of the old wooden tables, half-heartedly thumbing through a book I'd picked off the shelf. I wasn't really focused on it, though. It was one of those afternoons where everything felt sluggish, like the world had slowed down. A few people were scattered around, but no one close by. Then I heard a noise. At first, I thought it was the air conditioner acting up, a low, rumbling sound. But it was too deep, too irregular. It wasn't a machine, that much was clear. It was coming from inside the library, not outside. That was the first time I felt something was off. I glanced around, looking for someone else to notice it. But the place was nearly empty. The librarian was at the front desk, way across the room, too far to hear. It was just me in this corner of the library, and the sound seemed to be coming from the back, where the old archives were stored. I hadn't ever been back there myself, but I knew that part of the library was closed off most of the time unless you asked for something specific. It was dark, with just enough light to navigate the narrow aisles. For some reason, I stood up and walked toward the sound. I wasn't trying to investigate or anything. I guess curiosity just got the better of me. The further back I went, the more the air changed. It felt warmer, thick with the smell of old paper and dust. 
The noise grew louder, a kind of low reverberation that made my skin feel tight, almost like the air itself was vibrating. As I stepped into the archive section, my footfalls echoed strangely. I could see the outlines of tall shelves filled with old books and boxes of documents. The space felt cramped and quiet in a way that didn't sit right. Then, out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something move between the rows of shelves. At first, I thought it was a trick of the dim light. I blinked, trying to make sense of it. But then it moved again. Something large, hunched, and much bigger than I expected to see in a place like this. My pulse quickened, and I instinctively took a step back. A figure stepped out from between the shelves. I don't know what I expected. Maybe a person, maybe some kind of stray animal, but it wasn't either. It was taller than a man with a thick body covered in dark, tangled fur. The shape was rough, but the head was all wrong. Its face was wide, flat, almost human in a way, but distorted, like the features didn't line up quite right. Its eyes were small and too far apart, and its mouth was slightly open, revealing sharp, uneven teeth that seemed too big for its head. The thing didn't move right away. It just stood there, facing me. It didn't seem aggressive, but it wasn't afraid either. It was like it didn't care that I was there at all, like it belonged, and I didn't. My body felt tense, and my mind was racing, trying to make sense of what I was seeing but there was no logic to it. I was close enough to see the way its fur clung to its skin, matted and wet looking, like it had just come in from the rain, even though it hadn't rained. The thing let out this noise, low and deep, almost like an animal might make, but there was something more to it, something that felt deliberate. We stood there, both unmoving for what felt like an eternity. The room seemed to contract around us, and I was acutely aware of every sound. The faint hum of the air conditioner, the creaking of the floor beneath me, the distant shuffle of papers at the front of the library. But between me and that thing, nothing. Just silence, thick and heavy. Then without warning, it turned and moved back into the shelves. It wasn't fast, but it wasn't slow either. Its movement was almost deliberate, like it had decided it was done with me and had somewhere else to be. I stood there still feeling that strange pressure in the air as the noise of its movement faded. After it disappeared, I didn't hear anything for a long while. The silence stretched, the air returning to its normal stillness. And for the first time, I realized I was standing there alone again. I didn't know what to do next. Part of me wanted to run, but another part of me felt like running would somehow make it worse, like acknowledging what had happened would invite it back. So instead, I quietly walked out of the archive area, my steps careful and measured. I made my way back to the front of the library where the soft clacking of the librarian's keyboard filled the air. When I reached the desk, she looked up at me. Her expression was odd. She didn't ask if I was okay, but there was something in the way she looked at me that made me think maybe she knew. Maybe I wasn't the first person to have this kind of encounter in this library. I left the building quickly, not wanting to look back. As I walked to my car, I kept glancing around, expecting to see something in the windows. But there was nothing. Just the quiet street, a few parked cars, and the low murmur of distant traffic. I haven't been back to that library since. I keep thinking about it, though. About that thing. It didn't seem like it belonged in any story I'd heard before. It wasn't a myth or a legend from some far-off place. It was something else. Something that didn't care if people knew it existed or not. It just was. And that was the most unsettling part. It didn't make a grand entrance or cause chaos. It just appeared then faded away, like it had always been there, lurking in the quiet corners where no one looks.